What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Akala and we are here to discuss my book Natives. Uh, people have been asking me to do a video like this for quite a while, what my favourite passages were from the book, what the process was. So today I'm just going to read you a couple of passages and discuss them and put them in the context of the book. And we're going to start at the start. The opening chapter is called Born in the 80s and it goes like this. <clears throat> I feel like I'm in China song. I should be serious, it's very scholarly work. I was born in the 1980s and I grew up in a cliched single parent working class family. We often depended on state benefits, we lived in a council house, I ate free school meals. I am the child of a British Caribbean father and a Scottish English mother. My teenage parents were never married and they separated before I was born. My dad spent a portion of his childhood in and out of the care system and my mum was pretty much disowned by her father for getting with a nignog. The first time I saw someone being stabbed I was 12, maybe 13. The first year I was searched by the police for the first time. I first smoked weed when I was nine and many of my uncles, meaning biological uncles as well as family friends, went to prison. My upbringing was, on the face of it, typical of those of my peers who ended up meeting an early death or have spent much of their adult lives in and out of prison. I was born in Crawley, West Sussex, but moved to Camden in northwest London before I had formed any concrete memories and I spent my childhood and teenage years living there. Camden is home to 130 languages and about as wide a divide between rich and poor as anywhere else in the country. I went to school with children of lords and ladies, millionaires, refugees, children clearly suffering from malnourishment and young boys selling drugs for their fathers. If there is anywhere in Britain that could serve as a petri dish for examining race, class and culture, Camden would be that place. I was born in the 1980s in the mother country of the British Commonwealth, the seat of the first truly global empire and the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. What does this mean? What are the social and historical forces that allowed my parents to meet? My father is the British born child of two African Jamaican migrant workers who came to the mother country as part of the Windrush generation. My mother was an army child, born in Germany, spending her infant years in Hong Kong and moving to the small town in which I was born during her early teens. In my parents meeting are untold histories of imperial conquest, macroeconomic change, slave revolts, decolonization and worker struggles. I was born poor by Western standards at least. I was born poor and racialized as black, despite my white mother, in perhaps the most tumultuous decade of Britain's domestic racial history. I was born in the 1980s before mixed race children had become an acceptable fashion accessory. A nurse in the hospital promised to give my white mother nigger blood when she needed a transfusion after giving birth. Yep, the 1980s was a decade bereft of political correctness. The 1980s was also the decade of Thatcherite Reaganite ascendancy. The golden age of capitalism had ended in 1973 and the 1980s saw the start of the rollback of the post-war welfare state, increased sell-off of public assets and the embrace of an individualistic self-made logic by the very generation that had become wealthy with the support of free school meals, cheap universities, cheap council houses and had literally been kept alive by the newly constructed National Health Service. The decade saw the most powerful military machine ever assembled spun into existential crisis by the enormous threat posed by the potential of a socialist revolution on a tiny Caribbean island of Grenada and the self-appointed captains of global democracy could be found back in genocidal regimes from Nicaragua to South Africa. Though that could have been any decade really. It was the decade Thomas Sankara was killed, the Berlin Wall fell, Michael Jackson started to turn white and the move movement was bombed from the sky. The 1980s were fairly eventful, to say the least. For Black Britain, the decade begun with the New Cross fire slash massacre of 1981, a suspected racist arson attack at 439 New Cross Road, where Yvonne Ruddock was celebrating her 16th birthday party. 13 of the party goers burned to death, including the birthday girl, and one of the survivors also later committed suicide. Many of the families of the dead have maintained to this day that A, it was an arson attack, and B, the police bungled the investigation 
and treated the families of the dead like suspects instead of victims. The community's suspicion that it was an arson attack was perfectly reasonable, given that it came in the wake of a string of such racist arson attacks in that area of South East London. The Prime Minister did not even bother to offer condolences to what were apparently British children and their families. Of course, Thatcher could not, in her heart of hearts, express sympathy for black British children while supporting an apartheid government rooted in the idea that black people were subhuman. So at least she was consistent. There was certainly not going to be a minute's silence, and most of Britain is completely unaware it even happened, despite the new crossfire being one of the largest single losses of life in post-war Britain. That same year also saw the passing of the British Nationality Act, the last of a series of acts that were passed from 1962 onwards and whose racialized motivations were barely disguised. British Caribbeans had come to learn that they were indeed second-class citizens, as many had long suspected, but were not of a mood to keep quiet and keep their heads down about it. New Cross led to the largest demonstration by black people in British history. 20,000 people marched on Parliament on a working weekday and foretold of the harsh realities of the decade to come. Blood agar on, if justice na come, was the chant. It was to prove prophetic. So that's the intro, you know, that bit really discusses, as you can hear, the 80s, you know, being born in the 80s, what the 80s was like, a lot has changed since then, and really the way the book works, it tries to locate me in historical context. I was born into a world with a pre-existing set of ideas, with a pre-existing set of perceptions and political institutions and problems and conflicts and solutions and resistance, and I came into the world and the world had a perception of me based on who I was, where I was born, what the family I came from, and that shaped uh, my upbringing really. So it tries to place my life in the context of the political events of the 1980s. That's the first chapter, born in the 80s.